Edgar Mitchell and Apollo 14, his trip to the moon and back. So this idea that you could go to an ancient canyon, immerse yourself like, or sit in the, in the bottom of the pyramids in Egypt in the king's chamber or something and meditate and then receive messages from the ancient gods. And all of a sudden you say, oh, I understand what ancient Egypt is all about. I understand where they got this from. It comes through that ether by you going and connecting into it, just like you would plug into the Wi-Fi. And all of a sudden you're in the network and you're surfing the internet of the universe, you know, and space time. And so what they did was Apollo 14 astronaut, he did remote viewing and did a secret experiment. Um, he pretends like he didn't do it for NASA, but he's actually friends with, Ed, uh, with Warner Von Braun and everything. But he actually did remote viewing four different times on his trip to the moon and back. Uh, you did conduct an ESP experiment. It is now known. What, uh, what were the results of that experiment? What did you do? Well, the standard sort of test that uh, had been done in the laboratory by J.B. Ryan and other people for 30 years or more, I just simply conducted it in that environment. And I can only quote the results statistically because that's the way it was set up. The probability that chance could have produced our results was uh, 1 in 3,000. 1 in 3,000. So it was statistically a significant uh, test. So you had arranged, I guess, with somebody on Earth to be receiving, and you were four going people. to four people, and you were going to send a message. Mm -hmm. uh, what mid-flight? No, I did it four different times. Planned to do it more than that, but I was, had time to do it four different times during my rest period. It took about seven minutes each time to organize the standard Zinner symbols in accordance with random numbers selected from. Uh, a random number table and copied onto my knee pad mm -hmm. and I organized the symbols according to random orientation of the numbers one two three four five and then simply thought about each symbol in turn for 15 seconds and and the result was uh, that uh, it, it would have been one in three thousand it could have been that chance could have produced that result that result um, that's incredible yeah uh, it was, it was very significant. This is quite in keeping with what scientists had found in the laboratory for 30 years or more. Did NASA know you were going to do that? No, they did not. Had they known, would they have been happy? Not particularly. <laughs> so there you have it. That was kind of the whole beginnings of it and, and not the en entire thing. We're going to keep going a lot deeper here because we're talking again tonight about the critical moments and events that showed the government and these secret programs that this phenomena was legitimate and that these things could happen. So imagine that at Montauk, they came through all these breakthroughs and discoveries with Andre, Andre Puharich, uh, with this channeling, with this remote viewing, with the technology that they were using. And suddenly he's hearing voices from Enki and, and the nine from Egypt. And they're trying to figure all this stuff out. So let's just take it at face value, like pretend like it's real. And it really happened. And these guys aren't aren't lying to get like funding for their programs and stuff. Just imagine that it's real for a minute. So what they do is the secret experiment with Edgar Mitchell to try and see if it works all the way to the moon. So if you have an ancient sacred site and it amplifies your experiences, what happens if you leave the earth in the electromagnetic field of the earth? Does suddenly, does telepathy stop? Does it get worse? Does it get better? Does it get worse? And so he did four experiments all the way to the moon and back and they were the results were statistically significant enough that they realized it didn't even matter if a guy was walking on the moon he was able to tell what shapes and colors on the zinner cards were so he was able to pass the telepathy test it didn't even have to be on the electromagnetic field of the earth so suddenly in this program they're like whoa this is like a huge a huge moment and a breakthrough and so what happened was Edgar Mitchell came back from the moon and was fully vested now in this psychic spy program. He joined the team there at Stanford. He joined up with this Dr. Hal Putoff uh, right here that you see. And then here he is with Warner Von Braun, Uri Geller, Hal Putoff, and Edgar Mitchell. And this becomes one of the huge critical moments. This photograph right here actually captures 
the beginnings of the UFO crash recovery program that combined finally with the psychic spy program and how those two things suddenly merged and why today you have people like Jacob Barber and his colleagues coming out that are Delta Force operators and Green Beret Special Forces guys saying that they use remote viewing and they use these same methods in order to take control of UFOs, bring them down, uh, crash them, uh, high, basically through telepathy, they hijack the control systems, pilot the UFO down, and then these teams go in and capture them uh, for like for like Lockheed or something, Lockheed Martin. So it's pretty wild. But this is the first incident and the proof that if that program is real, this is literally the day that it all began. And we're about to hear the story of what happened. This is Uri Geller. One of the types of demonstrations that Geller likes to do is to sit with a group of people and attempt to send a number to various people in the room. With Uri Geller, this is Edgar Mitchell, who, with his eyes covered, is trying to pick up the number that Geller is sending. Also, we see Wilbur Franklin of Kent State, Harold Putoff, and Russell Targ of SRI, along with Don Schuick, Vice President for Research at SRI. This is the chart recording of the magnetometer fluctuations produced by Geller. We see here full-scale fluctuations of three-tenths of a gauss, which is a significant magnetic field comparable to the Earth's field. After each of these experiments, we would in general discuss the results with Geller. It's literally Yuri Geller and Hal Putoff at Stanford Research Institute and the origins of this whole program. So they're seeing if his thoughts can actually affect reality outside of his body. Can he think about the device like the magnetometer on the, on the counter in the sealed vacuum tube and just by thinking about it, can he affect the waveform on those charts? And can he affect reality that way? And over and over and over again, they seem to prove that that was real and that was true, that telepathy, psychokinesis and that kind of thing, there is something real to that. And truth be told, uh, we'll get into this a little bit too, but Hal Putoff, who you're seeing right here, he was the, the mentor and the trainer for my current colleague, Dr. Jim Sagala, who has combined all of these devices like the magnetometer, the uh, gamma ray sensors, all of this stuff that they were doing with Yuri Geller is now part of what is called the Modular Unidentified Phenomena Alert System. And I'm actually his colleague and we're teamed up on this. And we have 10,000 sensors that we're giving away for free right now. So in the link uh, in the description box of this video, you can go take a survey Everything that Yuri Geller was doing in this video back in Stanford with Hal Putoff has evolved. And today is this modular unidentified phenomena alert system study. We call it MUPOS for sure. That's the acronym. But you can get a MUPOS device and actually join phase two of the study and know 100% confidence that it came from the origins of this actual program. And we're still doing it instead of it just being Yuri Geller. We have 10,000 sensor units and a whole online software program and AI monitoring it and all of that stuff to track the data if this is real or not. These oh are the God. these are the <laughs> these are the gamma <laughs> waves that I've been experiencing the last what few days. So this is when I and I've got so this is what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> the, your reaction is so good. I love Sorry. that. Sorry. No, that's great. I've never seen that. I never actually went into your device in, the, in a long time. I haven't really looked at this. So these are correlative, especially these ones. If we can, here's what's cool. You can even go into these waves and like select a section like this, I noticed, and it will just zoom in on those parts yep. that you're looking at. You know, if at. you see on the left there, you got that underneath the arrow. Click into that. And you oh. got... You I didn't even high, know that was a high, thing. Yeah, and then you can put, you can click on a graph, like if you can click on right there. So click like anywhere here? on the graph, and then you can put your observation in. Oh, and then you can type the journal entry right yeah, there. See, whatever you want, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, and then that, because if you have other observers that are looking at that, they'll get an alert. And gotcha. 
Yeah. So, so right on that spot, I could click here and then put the. And then everybody will look at that and say, oh my God, get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I've been I'm going just, up. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. 